members of BOWS, Zoom invitees. My talk is titled Radical Prostatectomy, Functional Outcomes, a Cancer Surgeon's Perspective. Any talk about urological oncology is incomplete without a nod to Quillet Whitmore, the doyen of urological oncology. When Dr. Whitmore looked at prostate cancer, he raised the philosophical question, is cure possible in those in whom it is necessary? And is it necessary for whom it is possible? This question is best answered through a randomized controlled trial. Fortunately, there are several trials that ex ex explore this in urological oncology. The best of these trials with the longest follow-up is the SPCG trial, which followed patients for 29 years, randomizing them to watchful waiting or radical prostatectomy. The study showed that prostate cancer death rates were significantly lower in patients undergoing surgery, 20% uh, compared to 30%, with a number needed to treat of 8.6. This also held true for metastatic rates, 26% of men undergoing radical prostatectomy developed metastases at 30 years, compared to 41% of men on active, 43% uh, of men on active surveillance, with a number needed to treat of six years. Thus, cure is possible through radical prostatectomy. My thoughts about radical prostatectomy changed with the introduction of the surgical robot. Radical prostatectomy was no longer an extirpative operation, but a reconstructive operation. This epiphany was based on my interactions with Richard Turner Warwick, reconstructive urologist without peer. While radical prostatectomy cured uh, prostate cancer, the urinary continence rates reported in the literature were disheartening. A landmark study in the New England Journal of Medicine at the time I started doing robotics showed that 20% of men undergoing open radical prostatectomy had severe incontinence requiring them to use diapers and 15% of men had developed a urethral stricture requiring secondary intervention. To this day, the medical community is more concerned about oncological than functional outcomes. Two reports from the PROTECH trial show this disparity in startling detail. Freddie Hamdi's communication in the New England Journal of Medicine about oncological outcomes has been cited 1,800 times in the literature. The accompanying paper by Jenny Donovan looking at functional outcomes in these very same patients has been cited 800 times. In Dr. Donovan's paper, 40 to 50% of men undergoing radical prostatectomy were using one or more pads per day six months after surgery, and 25% of men were bothered by the urinary leakage. In comparison, less than 5% of men undergoing radiotherapy or on active monitoring were incontinent, uh, and uh, very few men were bothered by uh, this incontinence. The PROTECH trial also looked at other articles in the literature, uh, and uh, Across the board, three trials, PROTECT, SPCG, uh, and a study from Martin, Marty Sander in the uh, USA indicated that urinary incontinence uh, was around 25% uh, uh, at uh, 12 months of follow-up uh, and persisted uh, through 62, uh, 60 months uh, uh, or even uh, 12 years of follow-up. Such numbers such high rates of incontinence were not seen with radiation therapy or with active monitoring. Why are patients undergoing radical prostatectomy incontinent? We postulated that there are four mechanisms that are involved in the maintenance of urinary continence in men with prostate cancer. The most important method, uh, most important component was preservation of the urethral length, uh, but the bladder neck, prostate capsule, and space of rhesus also may play a role. Robotics allowed us to preserve maximal urethral length, and this is a paper published in the British Journal of Urology looking at uh, continence rates in 339 of my patients who uh, underwent uh, robotic radical prostatectomy with bladder drainage using a percutaneous suprapubic tube and no Foley catheter. Uh, and you can see that uh, at one week after surgery, 
44% of men were socially continent, 25% of men had full urinary continence. 12 weeks after surgery, 90% of men were fully continent, were, were socially continent, 67% were totally continent. Uh, and a year after surgery, 97% of men were socially continent and 86 had total urinary control. This is just preserving maximal urethral length. A more recent study from Dan Barokers looks at continence rates in patients with prostate cancer in the Medicare population, that is men over 65 uh, in the United States. The blue line shows continence rates uh, in men undergoing radical prostatectomy. The red line shows radiation and the green line shows uh, active monitoring. And 40% of men at six months uh, had urinary incontinence after radical prostatectomy, whereas the other two treatment options did not have this issue. Here, we superimpose uh, our results represented in the yellow line with robotic radical prostatectomy over the Medicare results from Barocas. And you could see that preservation of urethral length possible using the surgical robot give results that are more in line with what is achieved with radiation therapy or active surveillance than with the open radical prostatectomy. A further refinement of our approach <laughs> came from uh, Aldo Bocciardi and Kuhn Ra, uh, who talked about the Retzia sparing technique. In Bocciardi's approach, three mechanisms of urinary control are preserved, urethral length, the space of Retzias, uh, and the bladder neck. In a randomized control trial, Wu Ju Zhang and I showed that uh, Bocciardi patients had a superior rate of continence up to one year using um, using the techniques uh, that we learned from Bocciardi and Ra uh, and comparing them uh, to uh, the techniques that we had uh, developed ourselves, uh, uh, the anterior approach. In this slide, we superimpose uh, the results with the Bocciardi approach uh, to our results with the anterior approach and uh, uh, comparing them to the CO Medicare data. The red line shows uh, that uh, at six months, urinary control rates were superior with the Bocciardi approach uh, than uh, with any other approach that we had uh, utilized before this. While continence rates are excellent with the Bocciardi approach, we found it difficult to use it in the training uh, uh, situation. It was difficult for me and Dr. Zhang to train residents to do the anastomosis. Last year, we attempted a series of patients in whom the prostatectomy was done using a, a transvesical approach. Uh, this uh, allowed us to preserve urethral length and the space of red CS, but not the bladder neck. Unfortunately, we found no improvement in urinary continence using the, this approach uh, in contradistinction to the one published report from China. A newer approach that we are currently exploring is to perform the prostatectomy through the posterior approach, uh, as in the Bocciardi approach, and the anastomosis using the hood approach, uh, recently popularized uh, by Ash Tiwari. We rationalized that uh, um, this uh, approach would uh, have elements of both the Bocciardi uh, and the anterior approach. It would preserve the urethral length and the bladder neck, uh, but not the space of Retzius, and will allow us to see exactly what contribution the space of Retzius has uh, to um, the preservation of urinary continence. Uh, we named this approach somewhat tongue-in-cheek, the Borsherty approach, after Alex Borshert, who was uh, my chief resident at the time we were developing this approach, and I will present the results with this approach in a subsequent slide. The approach that we are currently most excited about, and is the subject of an ongoing randomized control trial, is precision prostatectomy. More details about the precision prostatectomy will be uh, presented in my AUA talk uh, uh, two days later. With precision prostatectomy, we preserve the urethral length and the prostate capsule and seminal vesicle on one side of the prostate. We do not preserve the space of red seas, nor do we preserve the bladder neck. This is a diagram uh, of the MPP approach. The dominant lesion in this case is on the right side 
and a standard radical prostatectomy is done on the right side, taking the prostate capsule and the seminal vesicles. On the left side, there are satellite lesions. Uh, here, the prostate capsule and the seminal vesicles are left in C2. Uh, <clears throat> Urinary continence rates seem to be excellent with precision prostatectomy. Uh, at one month, 61% of patients were completely continent uh, and 85% of patients were socially continent. Uh, at 12 months, 91% of patients had total urinary control and 100% of patients were socially continent. To summarize the various experiments uh, that we have performed, looking at the effect of uh, surrounding tissue on outcomes at four weeks, with open radical prostatectomy, urethral length is maintained uh, to a variable degree. At one month, 20% of men are wearing no pads and 40% of men are socially continent, zero to one pads. With the VIP or the first iteration of robotic radical prostatectomy, urethral length is preserved, but not the bladder neck or the prostatic capsule and the Red Sea space is violated. Continence rates were 43% zero pads at one month and 70% zero to one pads at one month. With the transvesical approach, urethral length and the Red Sea are preserved uh, and uh, the bladder neck and the prostate capsule are not. We found no improvement uh, in urinary continence uh, uh, compared to the anterior approach. The Bocciardi approach preserves urethral length, the red CS, and the bladder neck, and our continence rates were 66% total control at one month and 83% social continence at one month. With Boucher D approach, we preserve urethral length and the bladder neck, which we think are the two uh, more important elements uh, of urinary control. We do not preserve the red CS, uh, and we found no difference between continence rates uh, with this approach and the Bocciardi approach, suggesting that the contribution of the Red Sea space itself uh, may be minimal uh, for the, maintenance, for the uh, augmentation of urinary control. In precision prostatectomy, urethral length is preserved, the Red Sea is violated, the bladder neck is not preserved, and the prostate capsule is preserved on one slide, on one side, and urinary continence rates are similar to the Bocciardi approach or the Bocciardi approach with this. The great improvement with the precision prostatectomy is in sexual uh, function, and this will be the subject of my AUA talk. Finally, my legacy for robotic prostatectomy extends over 100,000 cases, primarily performed uh, by, pay, by uh, surgeons whom I have had the privilege of working with and training over the last 20 years. Uh, and this talk is a nod to them for their collective wisdom. I have learned from them more than I have taught them. Thank you.